Broadcasting from the iconic 299 Queen Street West. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, please welcome Virgin Mornings. Love the mornings. With Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. It's very fun, isn't it? Okay, let's go. It's honestly not as cold as it says it is outside. Minus four feels like minus six. It doesn't feel like minus six, though. Like, I love you, but you went from underground parking to underground parking. It's yeah. cold out. It's it, cold out. In the 30 steps yeah. it took me to get from my vehicle. Oh, it feels good outside today. <laughs> what outside, DJ? It's cold out. It's true. I was also wearing, like, essentially a down-filled blanket as a yeah, jacket. So, true. what do I know? Anyway. If we were allowed to hug, we'd hug right now and stay warm together. Yeah, but we can't because then we'll get tased. Exactly. That's the law, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they are calling for some flurries at some point today, maybe even tomorrow. They're, they have flurries kind of across the board for the whole week so who really knows uh about an hour from now you're gonna get another code word that can get you into the draw to get your rent paid which would be uh pretty fantastic considering yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you've been awake over the last year or so uh life's been pretty hard yes and life, having your rent paid would be pretty nice yes but before all that, let's check in with the crew. Jax, what's going on this morning? Well, I want to give a shout out to Glad Day Bookshop in the village, which is the oldest uh, LGBTQ bookstore in the world, in the world. And uh, they're doing um, their menu on the Ritual app right now, so you can order food and order drinks from them. But they're also doing this really, really cool thing uh, where you can have a blind date with a book. So you can order a book. It's like eight fifty, and then they'll give you a random book. And it's helping support, of course, Glad Day Bookshop and all the resources in the community, uh, the village community. And you, you, get, you get a new book. Which is awesome. So I love that. Shout out to Glad Day Bookshop. Producer Jesse, good morning. Kanye is suing an intern he had over the summer. So over the summer, uh, this kid named Ryan Inner Inwards interned for his label Yeezy. And oh, he no. posted a bunch of photos on his Instagram of his internship and like stuff there. And he had signed an NDA, which means he oh, is yeah. not allowed to yeah. do that. So Kanye yeah. is suing him. And it just makes me wonder, all these kids on TikTok right now exposing <laughs> their workplaces, is this what's coming for them? There was that guy. Burger King. <laughs> yeah. There was that guy who uh, got fired from his job as a paint mixer right? because people were really fascinated about how he would make paint mm -hmm. so they would do like guessing so he would say I'm going to mix these colors together and what's the paint going to be and then people loved it yeah. and then he got fired because he presented this idea being like hey this is a great way for us yeah. to advertise now no but you no. can't just be at Rona all day for eight hours <laughs> yeah. making TikToks yeah you can't no, do no, it no. Yeah, you're, not, you're not working hard anyway. when I worked in the metro bakery what I should have done was start a TikTok account on how I made muffins mm. and then I would have got fired probably like, Could have had ten million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Cool. take have to them be out here. of the freezer and cook them. That's how you made them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coming up in a few minutes. I I know it's like January and it's kind of like a meh time of year, but are you generally feeling optimistic? Because a shocking amount of people are feeling optimistic despite everything that's going on in the world right now. We're going to talk about what we're feeling good about next. It's ninety nine nine Virgin Radio. The middle of January is kind of this like odd time because it's dark, it's gray, it's cold. It's the new year, but you, like, you've probably given up on your resolutions already. So you're just not feeling great. But there's it's an, gloomy. It's gloomy. Yeah. All around, it's pretty yeah. gloomy. Now, in spite of all of that and everything else that's going on in the world, which is a lot, by the way, <laughs> new survey says 80% of people are feeling optimistic about this upcoming year. Okay. Which is really nice to read, actually. Very surprising, yeah. Uh, top three things that we're optimistic about. The idea of traveling more this year. A uh, hope that the pandemic will end this year. Yeah. And number one, that the uh, the fact that 2020 is over. So we're just happy that last year's over. <laughs> I feel like that's just called settling because uh, you, you yeah. can't control the clock. Of course, it's over. Yeah. No, I um, things are gonna get better, and especially like when you know vaccine news coming out and the vaccine rollout happening. Yeah, yeah. But like. I'm a hopeful person. I'm you, you are the most positive and optimistic I, person I know in, in a nauseating way. <laughs> I can find a silver lining in anything, but yeah. like, I'll be honest, I'm having trouble, and especially like when it's dark out, when, you know, all local businesses are closed, I'm like really desperately trying to find that light at the end of the tunnel. But um, when I'm having trouble, like I have a couple quick hacks oh, um, to like okay. reset myself. And number one, you're going to, you're going to not like this, but I, I go really into astrology. I, and, if, if I, okay. If I had to guess yeah. what the number one way you remain yeah. optimistic is, it's but probably reading about Sagittarius. Stuff. If you no, I'm, I am not a Sagittarius. No. <laughs> if I get bummed out, the first thing I'll do is like go check out a couple horoscopes. And if I don't like what one has to offer me, I'll just go to another one and then choose not to believe in the first one. But I'm like, sure. oh, it is going to be a good week. <laughs> this website told me it's going to be a good week. 
Uh, also, like to just get a little bit more optimistic about the future, I always go back into the past. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, so I, uh, I go and look at photos of the past that are like full of sunshine and happiness. But see, yeah, going through your photos. See, that can be a helps. tricky one because uh, my girlfriend sent me a photo of us in the summer mm-hmm. when we could like see people yeah. and we were on a boat at her cottage with like her brother and I was like, oh, this was this was cool back then when we were allowed to do it. Okay. And then I got sad because one, I'm not tan anymore yeah. or ever was. And two, I'm not on a boat currently. Yeah, see, the trick with that is just to have no boat in your life ever. <laughs> and then you won't get jealous, okay? That's true. Yeah. See, that's what we need, is to make sure that nobody in our lives uh, can have a boat oh. either. That's, okay. That's yeah. the new game plan. Okay. That's Good. how I'm going to stay optimistic, is make sure that nobody in my life has access to a boat. It is going to be okay, though. One day it will be okay, and we'll be in it together. Yeah. It's just not today. Oh. <laughs> it's Miley Cyrus. Jim Jax. A 99.9 Virgin Radio. You ever look at a dog and think, oh, what are you thinking? And you've always had that that like fantasy of like putting a collar on your dog and then they can speak to you like the like Doug from Up from the movie Up and he could speak no I as a 32 year old woman I've never seen Up because I'm an adult TJ okay well I'm just kidding you're missing out on life then because it's a glorious film I do wonder though I have a little dog named Reginald and I often wonder what do you think of, what do you think of my guy I feel like Reggie's a pretty complicated dude <laughs> you know still waters run deep uh, there so there's a company that has a new AI caller that can translate your dog's barks into emotions. It's a company out of South Korea called Petbulls, and it analyzes your dog's barks and then translates them and sends them to an app on your phone. So the team spent three years collecting 10,000 samples from 50 different breeds, and then they use AI to evaluate evaluate each bark. Um, it can diff- um, detect five different emotions, happy, relaxed, anxious, angry, or sad. And the app is free, but you have to have the collar that goes with it. And the collar is 100 bucks or 108 bucks for bigger dogs. That's actually not that bad. Usually they no. gouge you with pet things, but not that. It's actually pretty reasonable. I yeah. don't know if I want to go down that road. Really? Yeah, because I feel like it'll either make me really, really scared because, like, my dog knows things. Yeah. Reggie has seen my life. <laughs> um, but also, maybe it would make me sad because what if all these things about is like, when's mom coming home? Yeah, so but like, it wouldn't, it wouldn't mom. translate that. It would just let you know if he's happy or sad or He's anxious. probably always sad. And yeah, he's I think he's always anxious. always anxious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A Pomeranian chihuahua is constantly anxious. Yeah. There's a very good chance yeah. he's at home shaking right yeah. now. Yeah, waiting. Just, just waiting. waiting and shaking. Or plotting. I don't know. I do like this because a lot of the time you think about it translating your dog's thoughts into yeah. text and then yeah. like yeah that would be cool but yeah. like if I know that the dog's just in emotion it's like yeah. okay great although it would be a bummer to find out your dog's sad all the time yeah that's what I don't want to know I don't want to know that that's gonna be this this world is yeah. sad right now I can't know that Reggie's also sad dogs are a lot more complicated oh. than we think like maybe dogs get headaches who knows that's making me even sadder, TJ. <laughs> Maybe Reggie has a headache today. Did you ever think about that? I've been trying to TJ show. and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. If you have Snapchat, you could make a million dollars. Kind of. We talked about Snapchat, I want to say a couple months ago, in this new feature they were rolling out called Spotlight. And Spotlight was essentially their version yeah. of TikTok. And their incentive to get people to use Spotlight was this big statement that they were going to pay you money in order to use it. Like, if if your things ended up going viral, then you would could make a million dollars. And their, their big sell on this was it's not just for big influencers. Like, the algorithm could literally just pick something that they think is good, and that will do really well. Yeah. And the average bird can make a million dollars just because yeah. they had a really good uh, and that's nice. feature on Spotlight. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Now, when companies talk about things like that, you're like, oh, okay, but what about the fine print? What's actually happening? But it turns out that these payments are very real, and they're starting to go out now. And there's a 19-year-old named Cam Casey who made nearly three million dollars. Can you imagine from Snapchat yeah. since November? Now, to be fair, Cam Casey was already a pretty successful TikTok star. Yeah. They had over seven million followers. Okay, okay, that's not like. <laughs> so they not made have the like two hundred TikTok no. followers. No. So it's a you're, you hear that you're like oh good for them, but also like come on. What a humble start. Yeah, yeah. just humble yeah. beginnings yeah. and like 
obviously that has increased a lot of TikTok people to th- consider going back over the Snapchat, which is bizarre because there's no concerts yeah. on, so why have Snapchat? But it's not just professional influencers who are getting a bunch of money. There's another story of an 18-year-old who earned a million dollars from her comedic videos in the past two months. Like... So something that didn't even exist yeah. in the summer. Yeah. Within a few months, you now have a life-changing amount of money at imagine. 18 years old. Uh, so the company says that it determines payouts uh, payments based on unique video views and proprietary internal metrics. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that means. I, I essentially just means it's an algorithm. People making a lot of money off of the algorithm. All right, fair. Do you, well. do you watch things on TikTok or like email on the Snapchat thing and just think like, I have no idea how people go viral like this? I, there's some things where I'm like, oh my God, that was so smart or yeah. so clever or so creative. And then there's other ones that I'm like, is this coming up on your For You page? Like, and, how is this happening? And those are the people that are going to make yeah. the, the $10 million a year. Good for you. Get back on yeah, Snapchat, I guess. You can make some money out of it. Make the money where you can. Make it your side hustle. Harry Styles, it's Adore You. With What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. Okay, here's some very wholesome, sweet news. Canada's oldest senior got the COVID vaccine. Yes. So, uh, I mean, India's seniors community... Amandia. I can't pronounce words to save my life. Anyway, this seniors community said that Canada's oldest sen- senior, Jay Hang Lee, was given the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine on January 14th. Yes. Lee celebrated his 110th birthday in September. Absolute sweetheart. Uh, it's in Surrey, British Columbia, and they shared pictures of the whole thing going on, and it's very, very yeah. sweet. 110. Like, imagine. He's lived through a lot, and like, yeah, yeah just that, that would be wonderful for his family. Mm, Love it. Really, really cool. Uh, Sean Mendez has his own Chipotle item uh, named after him, and it's available here in Canada, too, which is fun, because normally these things are never available yeah, here. Yeah. But it's actually a really great idea. So uh, Chipotle is partnering with the singer and his foundation to launch Wonder Grants, which will support young sustainably, uh, sustainability innovators. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this partnership includes the new Sean Mendez Bowl, which has cilantro, lime, cauliflower, rice, Ooh. black beans, chicken, roasted chili, corn salsa, romaine lettuce, and guacamole. Bet it's hot. I bet you it's super hot. I bet you it smells like Sean. This uh, spicy bowl. <laughs> I don't know what Sean smells like. <laughs> it probably smells a lot like cilantro, lime, cauliflower, yeah, rice, black yeah, beans, yeah. chicken, roasted chili, corn salsa, romaine lettuce, and guacamole. That'd be my bet. Okay. Uh, okay. Until January 28th, a dollar from every purchase is going to be going to uh, the Shawn Mendes Foundation, which is cool. So lovely. This weekend, we got our first look at the Space Jam movie, which, if you haven't heard, they're doing another Space Jam movie yes. with LeBron James. And a one-second clip of the movie was released, and the internet still went crazy town banana pants for it. It was all you saw was LeBron James and and Bugs Bunny. They're wearing the jerseys, and then there's like a small explosion, yeah. and then that's it. I don't know. That's all. I'm scared, TJ. I'm honestly really, really scared because the original Space Jam is like is beautiful. It's yeah. perfect. It's a classic, and I don't want them to ruin it because in the past few years we have ruined everything when it comes back to uh, when it comes to bringing things back. Here's my hot take. Okay. It's gonna be as good, okay? Because LeBron James is yeah, actually yeah, very yeah, funny, yeah. and he's a really good actor, okay. and he's a better actor than Michael Jordan was. Okay. Because if you rewatch Space Jam, yeah. Michael Jordan wasn't really good. In that. No, he wasn't bad. Stop I mean, he it. had a dominant performance yeah. in the game. Yeah. But acting wise, wasn't yeah. great. He's had Michael Jordan money, where he's like, "No, this will be my movie now." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's what's trying to come, teacher. We're minutes away from you living rent free. So eight o'clock, gonna give you that keyword. You can text us, get one step closer to living. The next year without paying rent. Plus, going to give you a brand new smart speaker just for listening. 8 o'clock, only on 99.9 Virgin Radio. Good morning. Virgin Mornings with Adam Wild, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. Over the last year, we've just kind of had to start acknowledging the fact that doing Zoom calls and FaceTimes is just how you're going to have to communicate now. Hurrah. Having a Zoom meeting is just, that's just life, man. And there's etiquette. There's certain things that you should and shouldn't do. Certain things that are annoying and somebody online compiled a list of the top 10 most annoying things that you can do on your zoom call starting with number 10 getting kicked off after 40 minutes Mm -hmm. because there is that 40 minute version or like when you have the free version of zoom it'll kick you off yeah baby you gotta you gotta have a buddy with a pro account you gotta get that premium uh number nine when the zoom crashes and you have to log back in Uh, struggling to share your screen which is one of my favorite things. I love watching people trying to figure out how to share. Oh, hey. Oh, uh, oh, hang on. A lot of that. Also, do you not feel anxiety for people when they share their screen? Yes. Like, I don't want you to see what's on my desktop. 
No one needs to see that. Uh, number seven, dealing with microphone issues. Not knowing when to jump into the conversation. Yeah. It's the worst when you like make a joke or somebody makes a joke and you have to like unmute yourself so you can go ha 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 and then you remute yourself. You uh, you come on some of our um, announcer Zoom chats with some good one-liners and they land, let me tell you. Do they? Because yeah. it's just silence. I have incredible <laughs> anxiety when I'm like about to talk though because I'm, mm. I don't want to talk over somebody and I don't want to talk at the same time. Like I, it's just, totally. and I don't really have fear of talking and it, on Zoom it's a whole different, I a whole different you. ball game. Yeah. I'm the exact same way. Yeah. You think with our training on being on the radio we'd be a lot more comfortable yeah. with talking in yeah. front of people but who'd have thought uh, number five with big calls not being able to see everyone on the screen at yeah. once which is actually interesting I remember reading this thing a while ago that said the best way to do a zoom call is to just put it on the camera that you can only see the person talking because when you oh, have yeah. when you can see multiple people your brain almost doesn't know where to draw attention I to. I love looking and it, at everybody else in the Zoom too. I get so distracted. I will really? actually, on purpose, make sure that I do, if we have to do a Zoom, I'll go on my computer rather than my phone because it's easier <laughs> to see everybody at once so I can lurk. Uh, number four, talking for a while then realizing you're on mute or talking when you think you're on mute. That can get you in a bit of trouble. Uh, number three, when your video freezes. Yeah. Number two, you can't hear someone but you don't want to ask them to repeat it again. Yeah. And the number one thing, when everyone tries to talk at the same time. That's so hard. Or like, yeah, everyone tries to say goodbye at the same time and nobody can hear you. No. No. Or like the people who are quiet the whole meeting and then they just hop on at the very end and be like, okay, bye. All right. Take care, guys. That's it. I um, I tend to, if I'm off camera, it means I'm doing something. I, I hate when people go off camera on Zoom and like, you know what they're up to, but I do it all the time. Like I'll do a task while I'm on a Zoom really quick. Yeah. Well, well like, you've, you've taken meetings when you're in the bath. We've uh, talked about by that. By accident. We've talked about that. By accident. Didn't realize I had a Zoom, so I took a bath. Um, but I was just on the audio only. But no, I am. Um, yeah. Like if I have to pee, I'll just go off camera. Like you got stuff to do, right? What? Yeah. Yeah. Hold it, man. Yeah. No, You. if you got to go, you got to go. Fair Mark. enough. We said a text coming from the 905. I always search the screen for not safe for work content, and I'm not ashamed by it. When someone's sharing their screen, yeah. you do the quick scan to see if they forgot to leave anything up. I also love when people are wearing glasses, and you yeah. can see if they're actually watching oh, the Zoom or not, or like if they're just like scrolling through something else, or they're yeah. scrolling through their phone. Oh, yeah. I live for that. Uh, so we're taking your text, uh, 999 You can also call us, 416 872 99 on what's an annoyance for you on like your Zooms or your FaceTime? Yeah, yeah. Let's add to this list. It's 99.9 Virgin Radio. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, DJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. We're talking about little annoyances on Zoom calls or FaceTimes. Someone compiled a list of 10 and just a few are like uh-huh. when your screen freezes, when it caps at 40 minutes, when you forget to unmute yourself or when you are muting yourself yeah. and you try to talk, um, stuff like that. So we're taking your calls and texts. Triple nine, double nine. Got a text in the 416. When somebody is playing music in the background, that happens all the time. And you you just want to tell them to mute, but you're waiting for somebody else to tell them to mute it. Okay, I'll add to that. Just background noise in yes. general. It doesn't have to be music. Like if 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 you have the news on in yeah. the background or if you're cooking or something, yeah. just mute yourself. Or they your want to kids hear your... are screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I text them out of five. People eating on screen. Ooh, I'm guilty of that. I've done that a couple times. I've eaten some celery sticks on screen. But don't, like, of all things, don't eat celery, TJ. I want people to know that I'm healthy. Okay. Text in the 647. When you have a class full of kids and they think it's time for show and tell them won't focus. It's cute, <laughs> but not productive. Also, shout out to all the teachers uh, and education assistants doing classes online. Because yeah, no I kidding. cannot imagine how hard and ridiculous that is right now. Man, I, when you, I feel so bad for just the entire education yeah. process right now. Like, it just, sucks for the teachers. Yeah. It sucks for parents. Yeah. And it sucks for kids. Yeah. Like, there's no winner there. Sweet teachers, like the most patient creatures on the yeah. earth to begin with and now having to do this. Yeah. Wild. Uh, another really funny text from the 905. The awkward moment when you sign in too early and you have to make oh, small talk with the yeah. host. <laughs> I'll avoid going on conference calls or Zooms early. Really? Like our boss is chill. I love talking yeah, to her yeah. before that. But any like other sort of meetings, yeah, I'll be like, okay, minute, minute late, minute late. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, sorry, guys. Oh, no. I better mute myself and just listen. Uh, we're taking your calls too. 416-872-9999. Morning, Steph. So you have a problem with laughing at poor times. Yeah. So what happened? 
Um, I was messaging my friend something funny because we both have like the same shirt on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, oh, nice shirt. And she started giggling. And my and uh, our manager noticed and asked her what she was giggling at. Yeah, share with the class. Oh, no. That's the worst, yeah. though. It's like, it's like when you're in school and you get distracted with your friend and you both get in trouble and everything's in pairs. Sometimes you have that friend, too, that once they start laughing, that's it yeah, for you. Like, yeah. Adam is that for us. Yeah, yeah. When Adam gets going, it, it's over. Exactly. And she was like, oh, Steph was smiling. So that's why. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, she threw you under the bus? <laughs> how, many, how many people are on this call with you guys? About 13. Oh, oh good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, not too bad, but it was just kind of something funny that blew over after. But you, better start fo- you better start focusing harder. I, I know. Okay, this list is getting pretty long now. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. Someone compiled a list of the top 10 most annoying things that happen on Zoom calls. Uh, just a couple of them. Struggling to share your screen, talking for a while before you realize you're on mute, when your video freezes. And we were asking you yeah. to text in your Zoom annoyances to triple nine double nine, and they just keep coming in, Jax. Love this one from the 289. I can't believe I even have to say this, but don't smoke or vape during the meeting. I have seen vapor. <laughs> during meetings and I'm like and I and they try to make it discreet I'm like that is not humidifier that is not a you know like that's that's a that's smoke and I get worried that there's actually a fire also uh, when somebody uh, text number 416 when someone shows up with their cameras on come on I need to see the vibes first that's so true. true yeah it's uh, and then this one the text from 289 when you have been talking to each other in the chat and then realize that your professor can download all the private chats and read them afterwards I didn't know that yep um, don't don't like that. So hang on. So to clarify, yeah. person to person, like if me and you are on a big Zoom and we're messaging privately, you can't? From my understanding, that's true. But like when there's just the general tr- chat that shows up on the side and it's yeah. to everyone, that, you can th- that can that? be downloaded. I hate it. I hate when it. Zoom first came out, yeah. producer Jesse, is this true? When Zoom first came out, yeah, there was a lot of uh, trouble with the privacy with the, with the privacy yeah. of Zoom yeah. when it first launched. So, like a couple of weeks in, you could download like the private oh, conversation. That. Oh, that makes me feel sick. Yeah. <laughs> this is like when you learn that people yeah. get notified when you screenshot Snapchats. Remember that first day oh, you learned that? You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. uh-oh, what have I done? I thought you were going to say something beyond Snapchat, like maybe Instagram, and I was like, okay, I'm in trouble now. No, I don't ever want to learn about no, that. I'm just going to live blissfully yeah. ignorant. That's right. It's Billie Eilish. I'm not your friend. Everything means nothing if I can't have you. Virgin Mornings. With What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. Toronto's first COVID-19 immunization clinic opens today. Uh, the clinic's at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. It's going to administer vaccinations to 250 frontline healthcare workers a day, including those who work in shelters and harm reduction, uh, public health workers who will in turn administer the vaccine to others as well. And it's opening three months ahead of schedule, which it's is great. It's just happening. That's all we need. Like, it's, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It's happening. And the numbers are slowly starting to get up for vaccinations. Like, they, according to the province's report yesterday, they said... Uh, over 200,000 vaccinations in, out in the province, which is cool. I mean, like, yeah. we like to see that number a little bit higher, but, yeah. you know, beggars can't be choosers, right? Drake is the first artist ever to hit 50 billion streams on Spotify. Here's why this is so impressive. This isn't just streams in general. This is just Spotify. This doesn't count Apple Music or YouTube or wherever else you get your music. It's just Spotify. 50 billion streams. Uh, back in 2016, One Dance became the first single to ever cross a billion streams on Threshold. He's a machine. Uh, uh, threshold on Spotify, sorry. He's an absolute machine. He is. I mean, that machine is still making us wait for a certified yeah. lover boy. Yeah, we'll just be uh, wonderful. You could put that out in the next couple of weeks, but I mean, imagine. He's just going to surprise us with it. Yeah. You know that that's what's going to happen. I don't think so, no. I, w- with the amount that he's been promoting it so far, I don't think he'll put it out. Because he has put past albums out just out of nowhere, but not yeah. this one. No, I think he'll give us like a week heads up. This one seems very special yeah. to him. It seems like he's he's been really, really working at it, which is either a really good thing or it's kind of a uh-oh uh, thing, so we'll have to wait and see on that. This is cool news. Toronto's Glad Day Bookshop, the world's oldest LGBTQ bookshop, is now giving you a, a nice option where you can go on a blind date with a book yeah. through the Ritual app. So they've been selling food and drinks to the Ritual yeah. app now, uh, and now you can get uh, a blind date with a book. So for $8.50, they'll select a random book to send along with your order. Yeah. 
And number one, this is a super great place to support because they're always helping out the community. But two, it's like it's just another unique way I that need, you could you do know, something you at need your something home. something to do. <laughs> exactly. You need something to do. I'm actually going to order this week. Uh, Glad Day's incredible. Not only are they a wonderful bookshop in the community, in the village, uh, and they also throw great dance parties, just saying pre and post pandemic. But I want to I want to see what book comes through. So I'm going to get like some soup and a sandwich or Ooh. something and then see what wild book comes through. They have an amazing collection of literature. So very excited for that. Love Glad Day. Love it. That's what's trending. I'm TJ. All right. So we are, well, an hour and three minutes away, I should say, from you destroying your rent for the next year. We are going to pay your rent uh, for the next year. You just got to text your name once we give you that keyword at 10 a.m. Rent paid for a year plus a smart speaker. It's 99.9 Virgin Radio. Hey, boy, baby, do it. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. <laughs> is Jamie Lynn Spears viciously killing many cats with her Tesla? Well, according to headlines on the internet this weekend, it's implied heavily that yes, she is. But she's not. So here's what happened. Uh, she shared this story on Instagram this weekend in which she warned Elon Musk that her electric that his electric cars are secret cat killers saying i know there's bigger things to worry about in the world right now but someone's gonna let elon Musk know that the tesla is a secret cat killer okay we have now lost i don't even want to tell you how many cats because they don't hear the tesla crank and unfortunate things happen keep your cat inside jamie lynn well, no no she has a suggestion okay she said so since teslas are so quiet maybe he could like make one of those noises that bother cat or animal ears when it cranks up so that they know something's happening and they aren't caught off guard elon musk let's figure this out i mean you owe me a couple of cats so, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> okay so these are her cats okay um you know what though i will give her what is that i hate when people complain and have absolutely no solution but she came she came to the game with the solution and actually it's a pretty good idea Sure. Yeah. What? I but mean... A, no, like a high-pitched sound that nobody else can hear yeah. except for animals? That would be smart. Yeah, it would be. Especially for, like, raccoons and... You know what? All cars should have this sound. You're right. So, And then there would be no more roadkill. You know what? Yeah. Jamie Somewhere Lynn Spears revolutionizing the automobile. She's starting the conversation, let me tell you what. So this story <laughs> obviously went everywhere yeah. all over yeah. the, the weekend. And yeah. she had to put up another clip saying that uh oh right because they're yeah she wanted to yeah. clarify a few yeah. things number one i, I did like not me. run over any cats so that's good news whether or not it's true remains to be seen was she joking number two tesla is not to be blamed and was never intended to be number three user error is admittedly involved Number four, we always <laughs> check for <laughs> animals before moving a vehicle. And number five, I was only making a suggestion about something I think would be extremely helpful. And the geniuses at Tesla Motors are the best to go for said issue. She should have said like almost hitting cats. Like there's a lot, there's a lot to it. There's some gray area yeah. in that, right? Yeah. Like yeah. even in your clarification, I don't yeah. know that it helps your cause. She's like, uh, no animals are dead, but they could be. Yeah, okay. You know what, Jamie Lynn? Though she's giving us, she's giving us ideas. She's starting, starting the dialogue. Okay, are, are you like? I don't mind the idea. I think it's I think you're just like idea. Jamie Lynn Spears. I think that's. What I we love all Sp free Britney. Free Britney. <laughs> this has nothing to do with Britney. Everything has to do with Britney Spears. This has Spears. everything to do with Jamie Lynn killing her cats. Free Britney, baby. It's 99.9 Virgin Radio. Here's Harry Styles and Golden. Virgin Radio. Now, this is kind of nice. In spite of, you know, everything happening in the uh, world for the uh, last year, 80% of people feel optimistic about this year. Do they? And keep in mind, they're saying that with everything that's going on and in the middle of January, yeah. which is probably one of the harder times of the year because everything's gray and it's cold and the days are short and all that Today is also Blue stuff. Monday, I just realized. Oh, so yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, according to the survey, the top three things the top three things that are keeping people's optimism up are a hope that the pandemic will end this year. Yeah. The idea of traveling more this year yeah. or at all. And the fact that 2020 is over, which is my favorite. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> the past helping us, right? How now, time works. Now, Jax, I was hoping that you could help us out with this because you are, without a doubt, the most positive and optimistic person I've ever met. Yeah. And, and I say that as both a compliment and as not a compliment because sometimes you're nauseatingly optimistic. I'm having trouble sometimes, though, yeah. my friend. And I got to be honest about that because, like, I am an optimistic octopus. I am. And I, sure. I, I lean on that a lot and, and trying to find the good in things. But, like, it's hard. I actually even read a, read a tweet 
this morning uh, from our, our radio gal, Sarah Christie, who was saying that as each day that she wakes up, we're one day closer to this being over. Which, like, That's just true. a little slice, right? Yeah. And also um, realized um, that when I need a little something, I go to astrology. And I know you're going to hate this. I already do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I will so you look to horoscope. the stars. Yeah, I'll look. I'll look at my horoscope, and then if I don't like that horoscope, if I don't feel like it has enough <laughs> to offer me, I'll go to a different one. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. And if something random on the internet tells me I'm going to have a good week, I lean on that because that's that's all I have right now. I also look forward to dancing in clubs again with strangers. I think about that. Put on good music and then get optimistic about that. That one day we'll all be able to dance again. Right? Yeah. TJ? I'm sorry. Your, your two answers on how to be more optimistic are go to a website that tells you what you want to hear. Yeah. And then dance. And listen to house music. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I, I don't know about you, but I'm running out of things over here. You I'm know what? We got to try something, right? Yeah. It's Drake on Virgin Radio. 99 Virgin Radio. Do you ever just look at a dog and it's sitting there staring at you with its four paws and its nose and its tail's wagging and you just think, what's going on in your head? What's on your mind, BB? What can I do for you, friend? Yeah. I feel like anyone who's ever owned a dog has always dreamed of hearing their thoughts or talking to the dog. Or like if you ever watched the movie Up and you see the dog with a little the collar on and his name is Doug and he can speak, you're like, that's the dream. I have no interest. It terrifies me knowing what my dog really? actually thinks. Yes! Reggie, like my little guy, no, like he knows some things about me and he has seen some <laughs> things and I don't I don't want to talk to him. Do you think he would bring some stuff up from the past? He would ruin my life. Yes, 100%. <laughs> well, this didn't stop a company out of South Korea who invented a new AI collar that can translate your dog's barks into emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, don't be confused with, it, you won't understand what they're saying all the time, but it will break down their barks into five different emotions that they could be feeling. Happy, relaxed, anxious, angry, or sad. So they spent three years behind this, collecting over 10,000 samples from 50 different breeds, and they use AI to evaluate each bark in real time. Yeah. And then pairs with an app on your phone and it will tell you what's going on. So the app is free, but the collar costs a bit of money. It's 99 bucks or $108 for bigger dogs. But you're kind of right, Jax. It really does open up a bit of a wormhole here. Yeah. Because I think we always picture our dogs being constantly happy. Yeah. And I'm sure they are, but like, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it suck to find out your, that your dog's just like sad? I'm an already <laughs> anxious person. And if I, if my Pomeranian Chihuahua had this, <laughs> He would just be constantly anxious, and I don't need any more anxiety in my life. Like, he's just looking. His mouth yeah. is always open. His eyes are always tearing up. He's yep. just anxious, and I don't need that. I also... Yeah. You get enough of that here at work. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. My anxious boys. No, I um, I don't like that technology is doing this. Robots, man. Robots. More proof. Some people need these callers, too. Because there are some people that you just can't tell what's going on for them. It just comes up emotionally unavailable. Yeah. <laughs> prisoner, prisoner, Mornings with What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. Toronto's first COVID-19 immunization clinic is opening today. Woo! The clinic at the Metro Toronto Convention Centre is going to administer vaccinations to 250 frontline healthcare workers a day, including those who work in shelters and harm reduction and public health workers who will actually hand out the vaccines themselves. Uh, what's cool about this is it's opening three months sooner than they thought, which is great. Uh, according to the province's report yesterday, they've administered more than 200,000 vaccines. If you told me that, I would do the sound woo <laughs> for a vaccine <laughs> clinic opening up three months earlier than yeah. anticipated last year. I wouldn't have thought that that was true, but here we are. Wooing like well, about the club, you know? Jax, it's unprecedented yeah, times. Vaccines on the dance floor. Here we are. <laughs> so this weekend, a one-second trailer, if you could call that, call it that, came out for a movie, and the internet collectively lost their minds. That movie, Space Jam. Welcome to the... I was going to say, I was going to start singing, but it's not. No, you should do it. No, Absolutely. Cool. Okay, anyways, yeah, so it came out. It's the sequel to Space Jam with LeBron James. And in the clip, you just see LeBron James and Bugs Bunny both wearing their jerseys. Yeah. And then there's a small explosion or a large explosion, but the trailer is one second long. And it's not even a trailer, it's just a clip. I don't know. So. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Because the Space Jam original is so yeah. good. Like, it's so good. And I don't want it's them incredible. to ruin it. Here's why I think it'll be okay. And it's the eternal sports debate between LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Okay. You can argue about who's a better basketball player. I don't think you can argue that LeBron James <laughs> is a better actor yeah, than Michael, Michael Jordan. Yeah, Michael Jordan wasn't the best actor, was he? No. But that's okay. He had a dominant performance yeah. in the first Space yeah. Jam in the game. He was outstanding. But actor performance left yeah. a little bit to be desired. So we'll have to see how that movie looks soon. Uh, Drake is the first artist to ever hit 50 billion streams on Spotify. Now, keep in mind, this is only Spotify. This isn't Apple Music. 
and YouTube streams and everything on top of that. This is just Spotify, 50 billion. Back in 2016, One Dance became the first song to hit a billion streams. So he's just not slowing down, unless, of course, it's about his new album, yeah, put Certified it out. Lover Boy. Put it out, Daddy. Come on. Put out Champagne Poppy. When do you think? I know we have this conversation every single yeah. time Drake is in the news, which is like every day, but when is it coming out, Jax? So major artists usually release their albums on Fridays. Yeah. And there's only two Fridays left because he said it was going to come out in January, mm -hmm. the 22nd and the 29th. But producer Jesse seems to think that he's going to hold it off. I honestly think because like you want to put it out to the right environment. And I think depending on what happens with the inauguration, it could be really, really indicative of when he puts out that album. That's a good point. Yeah, so. Really excited to hear it because I know obviously he's been talking about yeah. it for yeah. a while. It was supposed to be out last summer, but he did say it was going to be a shorter album, yeah. meaning like less songs. Well, he put out two albums essentially for his last album. Yeah. So, yeah. And he was saying, so you'd have to think that if he's putting this much time into it, he really, really cares about everything that's on this album. Not saying that he doesn't Poppy on the other Poppy cares. Albums, but... Poppy cares. <laughs> or, you know, and I don't want to put this thought out there, but maybe it's just not very good and he's a little Stop nervous it. about it. Stop it. Don't say that. Hey, today. no. Just saying. And that's what's trending. You're TJ. Thank you, Jax. All right. Minutes away from you living rent free. So coming out at 10 o'clock, uh, we're going to give you a keyword. You're going to text us, and then you're going to get one step closer to not having to pay rent for the entire year. Plus, maybe you're going to get a smart speaker. Ooh. It's 99.9 Virgin Radio. Maybe Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. You see it a lot on TikTok, especially. Oh, yeah. Where someone's like, try doing this. You'll never go back to doing it yeah. the other way. And there's a story right now going viral of uh, the, a CEO of Laundry Heap, which is like obviously a laundry company. A big laundry conglomerate, yeah. Is advising putting ice cubes in the dryer because it's better than ironing. I guess when you put the ice cubes in, they obviously melt and they steam up and the steam irons your clothes so you don't need to iron them. Mm. They, they are saying, however, that like... Don't do it with a whole lot of clothes. It won't work as well. But and like, not, there's a couple that, like, shirts not in there. Not a lot of ice cubes. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't destroy your dryer yeah. just because someone on the internet told you to. And it, it kind of spawned this like interesting conversation of what's something that you hear or have heard on the internet that you just do now blindly. Like yeah. you don't you don't even think about doing it the other way. Like I know I once saw on the internet internet that when you move instead of taking all your clothes off the hangers. You put a garbage bag over it and you tie it yeah, and you just grab the garbage bag. And I've been doing that yeah, ever since. It changed my life. I put potatoes in my shoes. What? So every time, like not just any shoes, but when you get a new pair of boots, especially, and I learned this, uh, I got docs years ago, and you put a potato in it so you don't have to do the whole working in thing. The potato, it'll form around the potato. Like it'll ease up the elasticity, yeah. ease up the hardness of a boot. Put a potato in your boot. Yeah. Is that? Are you just trying to <laughs> get? No, you think I I'm don't trying know. to trick you? No. If you put a potato, like a big potato. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I understand. Yeah, I'm just into, I'm, your, into your boot or your shoes. It'll like ease up. Um, yeah, you won't get as many blisters. What do you do with the potato afterwards? You eat it. You can do whatever you want with it. A shoe potato? Well, it's a brand new shoe. I mean, wash it, TJ. Like. Yeah, put a potato in your shoe. Put a potato in your boot. I'm telling you, go home and try it. You continue you just to got, amaze me. You just got new blundstones. Go go yeah. put a potato in there. It'll ease them up. I think I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Just yeah. wearing them on my feet like God intended. Yeah, all right. Not, not putting produce in it. Potatoes, they work. I'm telling you. We want to hear your life hacks that you learned from the internet. And you can text us 99999 or call us 416-872-9999. At this point, this is like an educational program. We just mm -hmm. want to get the information out there. However, if you tell us to put like a kiwi in your gloves because it will get the smell out, I'm not going to believe you. That, ac that actually doesn't sound too bad. You know, I think about it, that actually probably would work. It's got the fuzz on it. <laughs> it's 99.9 .9 Virgin Radio with Sam Smith. I'm done hating myself. It's Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde, TJ, and Jax. On 99.9 .9 Virgin Radio. Someone, a CEO of like a laundry company said you should put ice cubes in the dryer because it will melt the ice cubes and it'll steam the clothes and then you don't have to iron them after them. So now we want to know like, what's your life hack that you learned from the internet that you tell everybody about? Mm -hmm. And you can text us 999 and call us 416-872-9999. Now, Chris, you have one. You can't live without it. What is it? If you want to do hard boiled eggs, like for sandwiches or yes. just to eat, yes. and you're tired of fighting the shells off, all you do is put the steamer basket in the pot and you steam the eggs for about 15 minutes. What? 
Oh, it's amazing. 15 minutes of steam. I don't know why or how. I, I wish someone that's listening who understands the physics will phone in and explain this. You'll probably get a text shell, about that, yeah. The shells fall off the, the skin, like off the egg. The shells just come right off. Really? No fighting, no crumbled eggs. Every egg is perfect. If you're doing deviled eggs, you're guaranteed to have oh, all damn, the eggs. Damn, really? Oh, and like perfect for salads, for presentation? Everything. Incredible. Chris, how does it feel to have revolutionized eggs? Well, I, I discovered this on the internet. Like, no, no, no. This is your those, idea. But... Take credit for it. It's yours and no one else's. <laughs> I'm glad to pass it along because it'll make everyone's life so much easier. And we need that right now. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm Chris. So I'm a sweet. really nice guy. He's so sweet. Here's, an, here's help with your eggs. Yeah, yeah, I just want everyone to enjoy eggs. I'm Chris. Oh, nice we got to... a bunch of texts here. Uh, I wasn't sure about this one at first, but now that I'm rereading it from the 289, cleaning the tub, mm-hmm. wet with water, add dish Dawn, so- uh, Dawn dish soap, okay. use a broom to sweep, and then rent, rinse. Easiest way to clean. Yeah, I guess that's better because you don't have to get your hands and knees, right? Um, but a broom? Like, you can't get in the crevices? Sometimes these life hacks, though mm-hmm. helpful, are going to feel very weird when you're Odd. doing <laughs> You know what? Growing is uncomfortable sometimes. Sure. Uh, I love this one. Uh, text from the 905 bacon grease hack. Put tin foil over your drain, then you can just pour the bacon grease into it. Oh, that's a good one. And then let it roll up and throw in the garbage. I cook a lot of bacon. I probably yeah. should stop eating so much bacon, but I <laughs> like. I always, I always have trouble with my grease. And uh, also this one, and... I love this one personally. Text me at 416. Life hack I use all the time. Hair straightener to smooth out fabric wrinkles. It's super fast and doesn't require an iron. It's true. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I don't have a hair straightener because I don't have much hair, but whenever I have access to one, it's just like great for like little collars and stuff like that. Yeah. Or like your sleeves, your cuffs. I can get a hair straightener. Huh? Uh, we're still taking your suggestions. Triple nine, double nine. The text you can call us four one six eight seven two ninety nine ninety nine. We basically want to turn the radio station yeah. into a TikTok page, yeah. which is just full of life hacks. It's, so we need your help with that. It's the time.